What's going on, guys? Let me unmute you, Anthony. There you are. Got Anthony Carter in the house. How you doing tonight, Anthony? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. So, hey, I appreciate you joining us tonight, man. I know you've got a lot of scoop on some of the arena, I guess, mishaps that are occurring right now with the AFL. Sure, yeah. A lot going down, even like as we're recording. So, I'm sure we'll dive all into that, but... Sure, got a lot going down, but definitely glad to uh, be on your show and, and to talk it all out. Yes, sir. So tell me, man, before we get started just discussing some things, tell me more about yourself. Kind of what, what's your background, where you come from, and what got you started covering the AFL specifically? Sure. Uh, born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, I started out uh, covering um, just the Philadelphia Soul, like the original Philadelphia Soul. Um, and that was at a time it had about about a good 12 teams. So it was my first year. And then as they kind of dropped off of teams, I think it went down to eight. I just decided to just open it up to the entire league, just covering all of arena football. Um, so, yeah, just been doing that. Um, day to day job. I'm a PR specialist, but I have experience not just with AFL, but I cover this year. I'm also covering the New York Liberty. Um, so it's been WBA. I've covered the NBA draft, NFL games. So I've been been around. Um, and then previously in Oregon, I was a reporter and anchor. So I got a little mix of all the different uh, communications aspects as well. Yes, sir. Sounds like you got an extensive media background. And honestly, man, until all this stuff started hitting the fan, I, I didn't know about you. I, I seen a lot of the postings and a lot of the things you were doing, and it immediately caught my interest, and I started catching on at this stuff's so niche man. It's so hard to get the real scoop and the information you need to make a, a real deductive reasoning of what's happening. So you being right. there front and center, putting that front forward goes a long ways, man. Seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and especially in an age of a lot of misinformation and all of that, I do my best to everything that I report, I confirm, you know, I don't like to report just on rumors, you know, because that always changes so i like to make sure that everything is by the books double confirmed um and yeah it kind of just picked up out of nowhere um the, the league shut down in 2019 so i kind of scaled back from arena football coverage plus i was going to oregon that's when i started to be a reporter so it kind of in a way worked out for me then when the league coming back with 16 teams i was like oh let's let's bring this back um it's unfortunate everything that's going down to in the way that it is uh, but Honestly, this is my my specialty is holding people accountable, um, and and that's that's what this is. So that's that's what you're seeing, and you know a lot of people, you know, probably got calls from players, calls from some coaches that don't like it, but you know it is what it is. That's the news, and I got to report on it whether people like it or not. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's one thing, you know, bashing someone or, or just spouting your opinion, but you're spreading real information. You're not doing a a hate piece. This is real news. This is real stuff that people should know. Uh, right. A lot of things would probably be buried if it wasn't for you getting them out and showing the world. Absolutely. And I think that's that's what influenced it because initially, um, you know, I was kind of not ignoring it because I was on it from the jump with the foot up your soul situation happened. I said, this has to go out. This is news. This is AFL news. That's what I pride myself on. And I made a statement uh, I should probably repost this soon, but I made a statement because the league never got back to me as a reporter, even before everything went down. I was just trying to cover the league, talk to the commissioner, all of that. No one ever got back to me. Media credentials, no one ever got back to me with that. One team said, we're not sure we can issue a credential. And I said, we've been covering the league before you started working. You know, some things like that. So I seen all of that and then a situation with the soul and nobody talked about it. So I made a statement where I said, for now, we're pausing all highlights of the AFL because this is a situation that needs to be talked about. And it looks like it's being ignored. And then that's the stance that I took. And I think that's why a lot of people respected that. And a lot of people tuned in because of that. Um, so it's, you know, it's not a, you know, it may look at as a hate dream, but it's not. It's telling people what's going on, being transparent, something that, again, holding people accountable, the league, has to, I don't want to do this to the league, but the league has to be out there. It has to be transparent with everything. The fact that they haven't said nothing, that's that's concerning. Yes, sir. Agreed. Especially when it comes down to people's livelihood, families, living Absolutely. arrangements, 
you know, job arrangements, whatever. It's 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 impactful. These are opportunities that these players and these coaches they could have went somewhere else and did something else completely. Instead, they basically have wasted their time in these different setups here and there. Players and coaches shouldn't have to turn to news outlets <clears throat> to find out what's going on with their unit. That's an issue, you know. So, um, but you know, I'm 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 grateful that I'm in a position to tell those stories. That I understand how that works, and you know, it's not my first time covering situations like this. Um, n- maybe in the sports world, but as far as like people not hearing back from, it's not my first time in situations. So I kind of know how to manage that a little bit. I understand that. Believe me, I've only been in the media game a year when it comes to sports, but I know just like you, a lot of these leagues I reached out to trying to start a relationship with and attend some games, whether it be in Louisiana or or Texas or wherever. And what I found was there was not much leadway with any of it, not any of it. And so we as AFN, that's why we pursue the UFL so much and represent it so much is because I mean, it's a legitimate structure with professional opportunities, and that's that's kind of why I, I do what I do for the the league of the UFL. <clears throat> and you know, and I think with UFL, what I've noticed, and you know, the league a lot of times, to be fair to them, I know they say growing pains, and all that could be true, right? Everything that's going on that could all be true. They probably didn't have enough people to have that PR staff. Everybody was trying to get ready. And it looked, it looked rushed. I think that's fair to say that it looked rushed. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But you have to be open and honest about that. You can't just go in the dark and not say anything. That's why you're seeing that you get a lot of the criticism that it is because they're not being open and honest about that. If they're open and honest from the jump, they were saying these teams can't be supported. This, this, and this, and this can't happen. People will respect, understand and respect that, you know, whether it's right or wrong, but you got to say something. Yeah, yeah, agreed. <clears throat> before we get off into it, I really wanted yeah. to kind of like like I told you before we started, I wanted to show people at home the differences in some of the arena leagues. You know, specifically right now we're talking about the AFL, which is Arena Football League. But there are other leagues going on right now and in as we speak even. Uh so guys at home, I mean, I just wanted to share a few with you before we got started so you weren't confused, okay? So first up, I'm just going to show you the NAL. This is the National Arena League. Now, part of the AFL came from this team last year, correct, Anthony? Uh, Yes, the West Texas Desert Hawks. Um, They were the the Warbirds uh, in NLA, NAL, excuse me, and then switched over to the Desert Hawks uh, for the AFL. So I felt like it was important to say this because they have some court proceedings that just wrapped up as of yesterday. So we'll yeah. get to that soon as well, guys. Um, next up, let's look at the IFL. Now, we're not getting into this detailed, guys, at home. I just want to show you the differences. That They're different leagues. They're not the same. So the IFL is completely different than the AFL. And right now, this is the most legitimate indoor league, in my opinion. Yeah, and actually, uh, in the IFL, a couple of the teams in there, actually three of the teams that I'm, I can see right now, used to be in the AFL. So there was the Arizona Rattlers, the Iowa Barnstormers, and the Jacksonville Sharks. Those are the only three that I can see from the screen that I think, uh, that I know for sure used to be in the AFL. I'm not sure about the other teams, but I do know. Arizona, since I was covering it, and to my knowledge, I think Arizona was the first one to really make that jump because – Arizona Railers were running the AFL, like championship after championship. They were the, the Patriots of the AFL, is what I always called them. So gotcha. for them to make that jump to the IFL, was that was huge at the time because they were like a powerhouse program in the AFL. I remember vividly when all this went down last year, there was a lot of excitement around everything, leaving, moving, whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, so last up, uh, let's talk about the American in, uh, I'm sorry, American indoor football. Is that am I saying that right? Uh maybe. The, There's like the, four of them. There's so many. The AIF is another one I just wanted to hit on very quickly. Uh, this is another indoor league. They have a lot less teams than the other two we just spoke about, but I mean it's it's just something else to to understand is happening right now as you look. American indoor football, that's correct. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, last up, let's head over to the AFL. So now we're on the AFL. This is going to be the topic of most of our talk today. This is their website. And after looking through it, you can see it hasn't really been updated in a while. So. No, that's um, that was their original website. Um, their new one is like arenafootballusa.com. But I'm not sure, but that's also very confusing, too, that they switch to the Arena Football USA website, and I don't understand why they did. Um, Definitely. So I'm, I'm not sure, but, yeah, they have two websites. Yeah, because this site right here is it's a nice built site. It's not, you know, yeah. it's as professional as it gets in, in terms of websites. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, guys at home, I just wanted to share that with you quickly so you understand there is a difference in these leagues. They're not just one – big arena league uh had some comments michael lathrop from player 54 podcast good evening gentlemen what's up michael how you doing man good evening, good evening. Uh, and then we got xfl mike g big fan of the ifl he's got his his gunslingers guns up <laughs> And then A7FL, streams and memes. IFL is very good, and the setup in Vegas is legit, as I've seen. Yeah, the pictures there, I mean, it, it looks awesome. I'd love to visit. I need to, I need to look more into it. I, I know about the IFL, but I've never dove much into it. But I might I might have to. So I may I may expand uh, Arena side, but I need some people that know more about the IFL to, to help me with that. And so maybe that's something I explore. I know Evan Willsmore, uh, he he does some stuff with the Las Vegas Black Knights. Is that correct? I may have that wrong. Um, but anyway, they're they're undefeated right now in the IFL. Okay. So if that's the okay. team to look for, if you need to check one out, dude, I suggest okay. checking them out for sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Then we had another comment. T-Bell, big fan of Anthony Carter. Appreciate you covering everything going on. Thank you, T-Bell. Appreciate it. Thank you. Then Vegas Nighthawks owner Bill Foley of the Vegas Golden Knights. Okay. 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 I'm gonna look into. I'm gonna do my research on my IFL. I'm, I'm very curious how they run. Like, I'm, I'm really. Um... Yes, sir. All I know off the top of my head is there are some rule changes, but I don't know specifically regarding how it how it plays either. Okay. <clears throat> All right, man, let's hop right into this AFL business. So, and I know you are you getting tired of talking about it? Let me ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I love talking about it. Um, because I it's 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 one of those things as a reporter, it's like you know, reporters love controversy or crit, you know, those types of stories. So, in a way, I like it. I think the, the thing I'm tired of is that something's happening every 30 minutes, it seems like. I'm like, I was out at dinner for, for Mother's Day and my phone, I had my phone off and it was blowing up and I seen cancellations. I was like, what is, can't even have dinner without something going on. And I was like, it's crazy. Every 30 minutes. So, <laughs> so in terms of these updates, the people at home, before we start, where what's a good place for them to kind of keep up with it? Do they need to follow you, check out your website? Absolutely. Follow me, uh, A Carter underscore TV or Arena Insider uh, at Arena Insider um, on Facebook, Instagram as well. Mostly, mostly Twitter for the best updates, and then I usually trickle to, to Facebook and Instagram. So, um, yeah, that's that's the best way to follow. And cool, cool. And I got, a lot I of times we retweet stuff. from verified sources too. So that's another that's another resource if we can get to it. That's me as well. Most of the time, I won't take a tweet. I'll just retweet the, the source. There's no point in me putting my spin on it if the news is there as well. Exactly. <clears throat> All right, man. So we've got some failures in the AFL so far. Personally, being a, a network and being a, a spring football hub, it, it really hurt my feelings to see this stuff. And I tried to ignore it. But as we go, as we went, there was just more and more and more and more. So, I mean, basically, where do we need to start this thing today? Because uh, I'm just curious. It's like, what? Uh, do you want to get to the to the breaking news first? Uh, yeah, let, let, are... let's start with the most current. Yep, let's do it. Most current. All right. So the most current uh, tonight's game, the Billings Outlaw was, were supposed to play the Rapid City Marshals. That game was canceled. 30 minutes, apparently from what we're seeing, 30 minutes before the game was scheduled to start. So that game was shut down. There you go. And Billings Outlaw also uh, 
Steven Titus, great person to talk to. Um, he seemed pretty furious about that, basically stating that um, the Marshals refused to, to play. And um, I guess we kind of read parts of that, yeah. And he said, uh, their refusal, this is Steven Titus saying, quote, their refusal to play is due directly to the incompetence, lies, and deceit by the current AFL front office. This is exactly why I made the statements I made last week to avoid this type of incident and have immediate change in the AFL front office. So in case people uh, don't know, um, I, or Steven Titus, he appeared on multiple things, but he came on uh, my show, Press Pass, and strongly criticized Commissioner Hutton in, in the front office. Um, so that's on our YouTube channel and podcast channels as well for people to check that out. Um, so, so yeah, this is this is a, quite a stand from Rapid City because Rapid City wasn't a team that we were um, no one heard about or not no one heard about. They they seem pretty tight on we're going to keep playing our season. The Marshalls owner he did appear on a local TV station's broadcast, basically saying that Lee has to pick up his phone, he has to do so and so this, but. It's, it, it, I didn't. I actually didn't expect the Marshals to take the stand that they did, but because they did, that I think this is something to keep a close eye on. I think there's going to be more dominoes falling, and 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 it's and we're already starting to see the Minnesota myth. The other breaking news: the Minnesota myth were scheduled to play the Albany Firebirds on Monday. That game is now canceled because Minnesota couldn't travel to Albany. So this there's a lot of moving pieces. So. Um, yeah, so that's that's the other situation with with Albany. So yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the statement today says the Arena Football League game between the Minnesota Myth and the Albany Firebirds, which was recently moved to Monday, May thirteenth, at the MVP Arena, has been canceled. Firebirds team president Jeff Lavick said, due to circumstances beyond our control, we regrettably have been forced to cancel Monday night's game against Minnesota. Levitt continued, the myth cannot make the trip, so we will refund everyone who purchased tickets to the game. Shoo. And this stuff just came out, man. This is what, yep. 30 minutes ago, probably? Yeah. Yep. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that game actually got moved to Monday. I don't think it was originally scheduled for Monday. Uh, wow. Something happened there. I think um, – uh, I guess it wasn't Minnesota. I think they moved the game because the Timberwolves playoff game. So that would mean that I guess they were in Minnesota. There's been a lot of changing and venue changing. So I, if, I'm sorry if I'm getting that mixed up, but I think that that was what was out was that Minnesota had a playoff game, home playoff game uh, this weekend. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to keep up with. And unless you got an Excel spreadsheet with the links, I don't expect you to have it all in front of you, man. Oh, my goodness. I, you should see the you should see the tabs on my computer at home. It's 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 insane. It might be illegal. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. I feel that. Windows and tabs. It's, there's a there's one window, a bunch of tabs, and there's another window with a bunch of tabs. It's It's crazy. It's crazy. It's so, let's talk about the cancellations first, then, since that was kind of what's occurred here. Sure. <clears throat> Do you know how many teams have canceled their seasons right now? How many? How many in the AFL are we looking as at? Of, as of right now, three that we know. So there's the Iowa Rampage. They were the first to shut down. Um, they cited a bunch of issues, including pay, player pay. They were saying there was just uh, delay. Uh, delayed shipment and equipment and and I think another thing which is communicating with the league office so Iowa was the first to shut down the second to shut down uh, I believe it was the I think the Philadelphia Sun and Georgia Force shut down at the same time I think there was a league-wide meeting on Wednesday that kind of determined those pretty much Georgia was a travel team Philadelphia was pretty much a travel team they only had three home games in Jersey um, so they were practically a travel team um, so yes, Iowa did. That was their reason. Georgia Force, from what I, I did speak with the quarterback um, in an interview that will release at a later date. Uh, it's essentially going into a documentary that I will I'll share more details when the time is right for that. Um, but basically, I can share you a snippet. Um, but basically, he he just he said he wasn't sure, and the players haven't gotten paid, um, hotel fees, all of that, or players are getting kicked out of their hotels. None of that is paid for. Um, and I guess the coach just sent them a group message and saying that they're they're shutting down. Um, and so, yes, the Georgia force is shutting down. 
Um, and the Iowa Rampage one to go back just a bit. One of the, the player I spoke to, and I saw also on uh, our press pass channel. He said the the GM sent them a, the team a message in a group chat that they're folding, and then he said he saw it on social media at the same exact time. So you're dealing with that situation, oh. right? So as a player, I'm sure you're probably like, oh wow, no formal meeting or anything like that. So that's what he said. I don't know how much that's accurate, but you know that's what he's saying to 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 be clear. That's what, um. So yeah, so to fill up your soul, another thing, uh, the GM Kelly Logan just announced that, um, and he he just he just said that the the league couldn't pay the players, that that there was just no money to pay them, and it just got to a point where you you couldn't continue to su- support uh, the team and finances and meals and travel. So it is a lot went into that. So what it appears to me is that a lot of the league owned teams. Um, probably weren't prepared to be I, I don't think the league was set up to control the team i think it was set up to have the owners control it and the owners take uh they put their money into the team that's that's my thinking i get I, and i'm not sure how much that if the if that's what the league is 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 you get what i'm trying to say so yeah yeah um but, but so yeah so it seems like the league owned teams are struggling so georgia was league owned philadelphia's league owned we're keeping a close eye on Louisiana, and I'm not sure if Oregon is league owned, but so that a lot of those teams that you're seeing like not stable right now appear to be league owned. So the teams with actual owners are are doing okay financially. There's no bad reports coming out, nothing to yeah. complain about. And that, right, and that's that's the thing. That's what I'm looking at because Billings, you see Stephen Titus, he said his guys are getting paid. Nashville Cats, they look like they're getting paid. Uh, I think Orlando has good ownership as well. So a lot of the teams that you saw have those good home crowds. And I believe um, Southwest Kansas Storm as well. I know a lot of people don't talk about them, um, but I think they're doing well as as well, um, it seems like. So, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's the, the, the owners that have a lot of financial backing are the ones, the teams that are doing well. And it's Understood. the league on teams that are, that are struggling. So the, the, the problem here is, is money. We don't. They don't have a. They don't have the money. Is what I'm. What I'm seeing. That's 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 what it seems like. We see all of these reports coming out, as far as medical trainers, um, the players pay, coaches pay, all of that coming out. Everybody saying the same exact thing. Not getting a paycheck. Not communication. It's hard to ignore. And you know, legally, we can't say if that's true or not because the AFL hasn't said anything. So. That's the other difficult, like communicating. So as a reporter, it honestly puts me in a tough position to say certain things yep. because I have to still be legally fair to the league. So I, I can't even say it, even though all the coaches and players, and I want people out there to know that. I know you know that, but I want people out there to know that. Like, although all the players and coaches may say that, we still have to legally be fair and say we're not sure. We have to say allegedly. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen that a lot on social media accusing, and I understand. You know, I'm not blaming anybody, but I want to be clear that legally we have to. Yeah, to yeah. Stay safe on that. A lot of people don't understand there is a line between speculation and actual news, and Correct. you can take that speculation train and get all the engagement, views, reshares, tweets you want, or you can share the news and have those people do it, do what they will with that info. So I, I totally get that, man. It's Correct. It, uh, with all the the merger stuff that went on with the UFL this past year, it was it was choppy there for quite a few months. Really? So I get it. Yeah, I mean, you had a lot of different wow. rumors going with with different things that never happened. You had the gatekeepers of the the, the news as well that you know they they attacked you if you disagreed with how they felt things were going. So opinions are great, and we all have them, but if you can't back it up. It's not a fact. Mm, absolutely. So you have reports of unpaid players, unpaid unpaid teams in general, people that just didn't make get paid. I know what I saw, what I just brought up on the t- screen was the Georgia Force did like a uh, GoFundMe because there's players literally stuck in a hotel. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I'm being uh, kicked out. So, but <laughs> you I'm, get kicked out. Huh? <laughs> I'm getting kicked out, but I'm staying on. 
You're you good, brother. Really. I appreciate you. I thought you wanted to help with me now. Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, All right. See, just, just, just for you, where I'm staying on. Nice, quiet <laughs> night, to, too, to man. People. Oh, yeah. Philadelphia is something else. So, I mean, so I'll, uh, I'll find a spot over here. No worries. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Oh, are they close to? Okay. All right. We'll be over here. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I appreciate you, man. Uh, basically, yes, I was just asking about the Georgia Force and how there's been a GoFundMe started because players are just stranded in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that situation, that's that's a really sad situation. Um, so, yeah, again, I talked to the quarterback uh, about that, and he, he said that, you know, a lot of the players are local to, to Atlanta, so many of them kind of made their travels, but then there's also those players that traveled into Atlanta and traveled uh, just to play with the team. They're the ones that are struggling or getting kicked out of the hotel, according to this quarterback. So, yeah, he launched a GoFundMe, and it already reached its goal, I think, within, like, the first 10 or so hours he launched it. Um, so he, I think he extended it, and essentially it's just to cover what he's saying is to cover the players' travel to get to where they need to get to, unpaid bills or, you know, things like that, things to, to help them – survive for as long as they need to so the basic uh essentials and to eat and all that so that's why he launched the gofundme and and the gofundme that's really a statement as well the, against and really almost an, an indictment against the league where it's like you have players that have to be public money to get paid that they're legally entitled to so that that says a lot there yeah yeah it's that's tough man that that reminds me of the aef stuff from from back in the Alliance of American Football days, when that thing shut down and people were just stuck, it, uh, uh, uh. these guys right. set their themselves up to play this play the season there in that city, and then so there's no telling what kind of arrangements are prepared and made for that, and then for something like this to happen, uh, that's got to be right. a nightmare. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, and I think there's more to come out of those stories. Um, I do anticipate some lawsuits happening, um, but I'm very curious. Um, at some point, I'll look through. I do have a copy of their contract and what it, it lays out. I'm curious if there's any legal, how far they can go legal wise, um, because I do remember reading. It. There's a there's a lot of like um, factors in the contract. Like I know one of them where it's it, it'll punish players for if they. Um, essentially protests or strike against pay or anything like that against the league, they won't get their payment. I know that for, for a fact in the contract. Um, so there's there's things like that. And, but you know, the old AFL actually used to have a union. So I think that would have definitely benefited the players if they had a union. And you probably wouldn't see many of these issues because the union is gonna look down at each contract and they're gonna make sure the players get paid. Um, so I am trying to reach out to some old AFL union reps to kind of uh, get their take on the situation, how it was when the, the league had a union. Understood. Understood. Mm -hmm. In terms of the 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 owners and coaches you've had on your show, you know, they've made a lot of different statements and a lot of different claims. Can you kind of summarize some of that stuff up from like uh, Coach Coach Shiver and and uh, Stephen Titus and, and those individuals? Sure, uh, Coach Shiver. Um, for people who don't know, Louisiana Voodoo head coach. Um, you know, and I was actually just messaging him tonight, trying to get some clarification because the Voodoo were supposed to have a game, and uh, it doesn't seem like that's that's happening. I forget who they were supposed to play. Um, uh, I forget what team. Oh, Orlando. They were supposed to play Orlando. That that doesn't look like that game was actually canceled. Gotcha. Um, but 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 talking to Shiver on an inter on an interview, he was essentially saying that the league was supposed to provide them the proper equipment, so they had to move from Lake Charles to uh, Lafayette. Yeah, that was and, what two weeks prior to the season, right? I mean, was, no, before was... that, I, I think it was like a week the week up. I think they had to make wow. that change if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was either the week of or the week before, but I know it was very close to quickly ship venues like that. 
and they're far apart in cities. Um, so it's not like it's a next town over. Um, Understood. So, but he broke that down from the Lake Charles mayor. He actually made a statement saying that the league didn't provide any type of payment and there was a lot of red flags there. Um, I posted that on my story, which I meant to get on the website, but that's what he said from the Lake Charles mayor said that. Um, so he, so, uh, Shira didn't, didn't go that much into detail, but he said the net system, um, those were, he, they, they, they went with what they, they had at the time, the boards, they looked in their, their arena that they played in. And I guess the old arena league team that played in that venue, they found the boards in like a closet somewhere. So they just, they just used those boards, set them up. Um, and did the best with what they had. The net system wasn't up to par. I'm sure everyone's seen that. Um, and I'm trying to find a photo, said, but I couldn't find one of the nets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have to find that. I was trying to find that too. Someone, someone posted it. Um, so yeah, that man, they just had to, they just had to rock with that. Um, so he was explaining that, but his main thing was that there was no communication from with the league office so everyone's saying the same thing that they're not communicating with them they don't know when games are and um just kind of criticizing the league ownership steven titus he was way more vocal about the situation with the afl league office um just explaining same situation not explaining uh Sorry, that's you're good, man. Out there, that's downtown Philadelphia for you. <laughs> all day, all day, day and night. Okay, so um, so be prepared to hear a lot of that. That's just uh, some good that sound for you. Um, so, so um, yeah. So Stephen Titus, um, he he um, the owners meeting. Uh, they said that they're they're not getting communicated en enough about the situation going on lack of pay there as well so all, all of them almost pretty much said the same thing um which which is concerning and i really do wish the league even if it's wrong i need the league to at least say that and say these claims are wrong to hear something you know but to yeah. not hear anything it's 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 a shame it, it really is because there's unanswered questions for players coaches and media as well and fans Ooh. fans too it leaves a lot of room for different assumptions when you look at the negative stuff that's happening and put the pieces together. I mean, it, in my opinion. <clears throat> yes. So tell me, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Uh, who is in charge of the AFL? Who who is when when the when the owners and coaches are speaking of management? Who is that exactly? Who are we who are we talking about? I think they're they're talking about the top with um, Commissioner Lee Hutton. They were talking about CEO Travell Gaines, but uh, I believe Travell Gaines resigned. Uh, we reported that that he resigned, according to Coach Shiver. And then you had um, there was another CEO. I think his name was Matt. I don't want to get the name wrong, but apparently he resigned as well. I've seen reports of that. So I think they're mainly talking about them. And as far as everyone else no one knows <laughs> so it's 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 like as of right now it's it's looking like it's just it's lee hunt when they're talking about management and i'm not sure if he's calling all of the shots but we, we don't know and from reports and statements that i've gathered from your information lee hutton is not anywhere to be found for any kind of statement clarity or guidance i guess nothing at least from a media standpoint i don't know if there's other um players that have been in touch with them or coaches been in touch with them um i know the, the quarterback i interviewed um uh, justin from the georgia forest he said that his coach was constantly in contact with lee hutton but even a quarterback doesn't even know if that's true or not so there's 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 a lot but i do know um the philadelphia soul gm kelly logan said after the meeting I guess he was in contact with them, so I'm 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 not sure what's going on. It it is a very very strange situation to not have. I I can't imagine this going on in the NFL or the NBA. I mean, it, it 
because you know Roger Goodell already gets booed during draft night. Could you imagine if he didn't if all this was going down and he didn't say anything? Oh my goodness. <laughs> be nonstop coverage on first take and NFL network. 24 hour coverage. Where is Goodell? So that's you know, but 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 that's the other <laughs> that's the other thing though, right? That's why you need that structure, you need that PR. I don't I don't know if the Air Force had that, but they definitely um could benefit from that. And you know, my company X1 Media specializes in PR services. So if they're watching this, we can we can get them that help. I'm being serious too. Just putting that out there. I I understand. And if you can help them, <laughs> you're reaching out that arm. That's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, any way I can. So we specialize in PR. So let's talk about a few more things before we let you go. Uh it's speaking of the the NFL network deal, can you tell me more about that and how that occurred? What happened? Uh, yeah, so the NFL, they, um, NFL Network reached a partnership with the Arena Football League uh, initially before the season to broadcast 30-plus games. It was going to be scheduled. Um, they were also going to live stream it on their NFL Plus app as well. Then after week one, people started noticing the games were not on the schedule. People are like, what's going on? That's weird. Then the games were removed. According to the AFL, you know, the, their podcast hosts, he said that there was issues getting people to talk together and they were having other equipment issues. But basically, it wasn't going to work in time for week one. So they, the AFL said that it was going to be pushed to week two and coverage would continue. Then leading up to week two, I think it was like a day before the Thursday game, the games were once again taken off the schedule. So I made, I, I, when I tell you, I emailed, I knew the AFL wasn't going to respond to me, but I emailed every NFL communications person I know, and they reached back out to me, and he told me that, um, that, that they're just not going to broadcast any AFL games the rest of the season. He did tell me more, but he did tell me off the record. So to be fair with him, I can't share everything going, going uh, what went down behind that. He just said that they're not going to – Frog has any more AFL games the rest of the season. Either way, it's a huge blow to the league, you know, because there was that was the big hype around that the revival was NFL Network and broadcasting. Because at the end of the day, it's about the players and the coaches getting to that next level. And NFL Network was going to be a great way for them to get film, broadcast themselves to a bigger audience, and it would benefit the AFL too because now you're talking about revenue. Yep. You're getting money, ad money, TV uh, teams are getting money. So that was that was a huge blow to the AFL. Um, so, yeah, I can't share all the details based off, you know, what he told me that it was off the record. But, yeah, they're not broadcasting any more games for the rest of the season. Understood. Now, and they also they kind of went to a secondary and a third network as well. I don't know the exact details, but. Or any of the games available for streaming right now that, that are still being played? Yeah, they 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 had they launched their own live stream. It was like Arena Football Live. Um, that was their own. I don't even know if that's up up and running. They didn't show many games. They were on Vire Network. I think they still are. I'm not even sure if that's. I think I think those those games are actually streaming. I don't know. I haven't checked, but. So as of right now, those are the only two. And it looked like Albany were setting up for a live stream on YouTube for their game. But that game just canceled, so I'm not sure what's happening there. So um, I don't I don't know how, how fans can watch other than go to the game. But also, I don't even know who's keeping track of stats. You don't see any yards information, touchdowns. Like Darius Prince, I think he had five or six touchdowns in one of those games. Like, that's a big deal, you know. So, and that's not even recorded, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what the streaming, but as right now, according to the AFL, I believe it's just on Bayer Network and their Arena Football Live. That's Understood. what they have broadcasted. Yeah, Understood. Yeah. So a, the IFL they do everything from YouTube, and you can watch any of their games when they're playing. And yep. I can see revenue wise, you know, it's not going to make as much money for sure, but who knows. Mm-hmm. Had a comment from XFL Mike G, and you can refuse to chime in on this if you'd like. He said, heard that the AFL didn't pay the production company that handled the broadcast. You know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me. Again, I, 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 I know more details, but I, because I heard off the record, I, I, I got to be fair and can't say why. Um, but uh, 
I won't I won't refuse. I won't say that that's wrong or that's right. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> he also said XFL Mike G said seems like they put the cart before the horse hoping to make money from the games to pay back bills. Yeah, and you know and and, and I'm not even mad that that that's a comment that he thinks that because that I, honestly that seems like that's, that's what the case is. You see all these situations all of these broadcast deals being made, all of these teams promised, and all of these cities that the AFL is coming to, and everyone's folding, and everyone's saying they're not receiving payment, nothing's getting paid. It, it It's crazy. It's hard to ignore. So, yeah. <laughs> Michael Lathrop said, Bid, big red flags when the commissioner's wife's team had to cancel due to not being able to travel. Oh, is that what? Is that what it was that she, that she couldn't travel? I know they said Minnesota couldn't travel, but uh, oh, he said Commissioner's wife team. Okay, yeah. yeah, she's the owner of the team. Okay, so then yeah, that is yeah, big. That is a red flag. So that's I I don't know. This is bizarre. And you know, I I I came to realize this also. I was on Twitter, and when I broke the news about the Philadelphia Soul, uh, I don't even think we got into that because there's so much going on. That happened like two weeks ago yesterday. I didn't even realize that that was two weeks ago. All this is going on. It felt like months that all this is going on. I'm like, we're really in week three. This is crazy. Yeah, you can't even write a story before something else drops. My goodness. Like, I'm, I'm, I'll be at work and I'm just hoping I'm like, please, nothing happened. Like, at least not till I get off. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Let me ask you this is in, in sure. your opinion here. Okay. You don't, you can speak if you can respond to this, however you feel best, but don't think I'm okay. pressuring you. Okay. Will the AFL complete the 2024 season? Oh, I got to ask that question a lot, you know? So where we were at 16 teams on paper, we're down to 13 now. Rapid City made a statement by not playing. I don't see the AFL playing this whole season. I mean, because you got 10 weeks, or you got seven more weeks after this week, and then you have playoffs. You know, how do you how do you rank the playoff system if there's teams out and divisions? So you got to – I don't think they do. I think all of this is, is going to – if all of this ends up being true as far as the finances and all of that, there's no way you can survive. And if teams see what Rapid City Marshals did, and what Billings Outlaws are saying. I expect something soon coming from the Voodoo. I think they're gonna make a statement. When you see all these teams going to start trickling down, you realize you don't have any team to play. You don't wanna play the same team six weeks in a row. So be a it's seven game weeks. series. Yeah, It'd seven be... game series. That could be a good idea. So we... <laughs> they'll do they'll or... do a game, a bye week, a game, a bye week, game of Oregon bye and week. Oregon and Washington back and forth. You know, <laughs> that's what that that's almost happened. So um yeah, I I think to answer your question, I don't think it does. And I don't think honestly, I don't think it should. I said before the season that the AFL should take the season all before all this went down, I said like a month, I think it was like a month before, I said the AFL should take the season off because of all of the venue changes that happened after the voodoo switch from Lake Charles. I said, all of these last minute venue changes, no one's getting back to us. The soul not playing in Philadelphia, playing in Trenton, New Jersey. All of those red flags, I said, the, the AFL should take the year off, reevaluate, make sure every team is good to go, then start back up 2025. But I think what happened with the AFL is that I think there was so much hype around it, so much build up to the point where they're like, we got to keep going. And we know that there might be issues, but we got to we gotta look past it because all the eyes are on us. And I, I think that it was that thinking and that ego that, that is yeah, starting to catch up to them. Do you think the league will last long? Flip it back on you. From me and from watching the past, at, uh, from watching spring football so far in my adult life, I will say no. If it does make it, it's going to be a pitiful shell of what it was supposed to be. And it's going to be a show just to to keep the hype up for the next season. Uh, but I know with these leagues, any league that you're doing, it takes dollars. And if you don't have the money, if already you're going into the season in the red, you're probably not going to make it through that season. That's just 
right. basic, you know? Yeah. It, it, and I, I think it's in the best interest they cancel, honestly. I think they should cancel right now and take a step back and make sure you address these these issues that players and teams are claiming. I mean, you can't ignore the teams that did fold. You know, the player pay you can you can discuss, but the teams that did fold you gotta address. Why did they fold? Because now you're talking about next year and beyond. You know, they're talking about AFL for the next thirty years. You got a new Arizona expansion team that's expected to join in twenty twenty five. They seen all this going down. They may take a step back or it's you know I don't know what league they would join. Can't do the IFL because you got the Railers, so I don't know where they would go. But um, so yeah, it's it's. Uh, the, I think they should stop the season now while they while they can, and just kind of just just reevaluate everything. Yeah, I mean, you're not only you're not only disengaging the fan interest, you're also affecting your potential to have skilled players play on any of these teams in the future. No serious athlete is going to come into this league next year unless there is any, there is no other options for that player. They're going to go somewhere where they know they're going to get paid, where they know they can sleep and eat at night safely and, and pursue whatever dream they're pursuing. So and you know, I was I was on a I was on another show, and I thought at this point, where you know, because I've covered the AFL through the previous previous years over ten years now, and I know one thing that is critical, and it's the fans' trust. That's the fans what I was have lost to, yes, a sir. lot of trust in the league over the years. You have a a golden opportunity to regain that trust. Mm -hmm. If you saw all this going down week one, I'm talking about with the Philadelphia soul. That's the time where you come out and adjust that. Or if you have to take like a season pause, like a two week season pause and be like, we need to reevaluate. That way you're showing the fans that, okay, we see that there's an issue. We're not trying to waste your guys' money. We want to make sure this is the best program. We're going to, we're going to get in front of it. You have to regain the fans' trust. The fans have lost a lot of trust in the AFL because they've seen the league be here, then fold, then come back, then fold again, then go on strike, facing lawsuits, teams folding, coming back. You know, so back and forth, you teams, fans are going to start watching IFL, like you mentioned, and NAL and AAL, AAFL, or whatever league they are, how many L's there, I don't know, how many arena <laughs> leagues. <laughs> so, like the Dallas Falcons are, that play for the Philadelphia Soul are in the American Football Association, I don't know, I didn't even hear about it, I was like, okay, I didn't even realize there was that many leagues. But <laughs> fans are going to, people love arena football. I've seen the Wells Fargo Center packed. I've been when the Cleveland Gladiators were around, and that playoff game, when the Soul played the Cleveland Gladiators, Packed, packed stands. People love AFL, so they don't want to see this this go on, and especially players that you know people get a kick out of their AFL players going to the league and going making big moves. You know, Southwest Kansas Storm. They had a player that was signed. I think it was like right before their game, so he got signed to an NFL team, and that blew up for their social media. So people like to see that. You know, that this is for the players. This is their avenue to to get to a bigger league, or for some, this is their last resort. Yeah, so, yeah, that trust is important. I agree with that a hundred percent. And coming as as a spring football guy, I'm I'm right there with you. And you see that in terms, even for like the UFL, in terms of attendance numbers, you know, these a league like the UFL can survive off of the TV ratings. They can survive off of those numbers alone. But an arena league or an indoor league, they're much smaller. They're much more community driven. If they don't have that community fan buy-in and trust, that's no revenue. Absolutely, Absolutely none. Right. You're just spending that's money every month. So I mean, money, I, all of that. I get it, man. I know right now, if you look at different cities in the UFL that had previous teams in the Alliance of American Football, the attendance numbers were way better, way better. Mm -hmm. Now you look, I mean, we're 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 short a lot compared to those days, and that's just because that overall trust isn't there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's it's important. I mean, that's imagine the NFL without fans or the NBA without any fans and you know, just in the stands, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna stick around, you know. So it's 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 uh all of that, all of that is key. And it looks better on TV too, when you see a bunch of fans. No one wants to see empty seats, you know, and you shouldn't 
by the way, for the AFL while we're on the topic, they should not have games on a Thursday or a Sunday, especially on Mother's Day. And there's a couple games on Mother's Day. I'm not expecting a big crowd on that. You know, for, traditionally, games have been on Saturday. And on some occasions, there were some Sunday games. If there was a if there was a schedule change or a conflict, they would have Sunday games. So Sunday games aren't too bad, but Thursday games, it, it just it didn't it didn't look right, especially for Albany. They didn't look like anyone was in those games. Seriously. Yeah, just to get there. I mean, you're you're taking a lot of time out of someone's day. Yes, and think about the game tonight. Think about I don't know you know how far that arena is but imagine driving all the way over there and then you find out the door that the game is canceled and it wasn't mm. weather related or anything like that it was because the team wasn't showing up mm. Mm. no one knew beforehand nothing went out beforehand it was the day of like minutes before that's the same thing that happened with the voodoo correct um last week or the week prior they just didn't show up uh, right? was it um i think the voodoo I can't remember what where you're talking about. Was it uh, they played I remember, Oregon? I remember seeing a statement from them that said uh, that apologized about not communicating like they normally do, and that there's changes occurring amongst the league. Oh, and, yeah they they had a game canceled or they were given a bye week. That's what. Uh, it was, yes, yep. yes, yes, yes. So okay, I remember that. So they were placed on a bye week, and I think it's because. The league placed them on a buy because they said that their arena isn't safe. But I don't know how much true that is because they were saying that about Oregon. No one wanted to go to Oregon. So Billings were supposed to play Oregon, but they moved Billings to Washington because they were like, it's not safe to play in Oregon. And so I think because of all those switches, Louisiana was given a buy. And so because they were given a buy, I think they put out that statement that that wasn't their, that wasn't their call. And, you know, they haven't been communicating. So yeah, that's what you were talking about. See, so much goes on that I'm like, I have to I have to sit here and think. <laughs> we're only three weeks in. <laughs> you know, that's crazy to think about. <laughs> I can't three keep up in. personally. That's why I don't post much stuff on this. It's because I don't have time to go and, and look it up and do more research doing everything I'm, else. So. I'm trying to get uh, my WNBA site launched. I haven't had time to. <laughs> because something's happening every half hour i'm sure something i'm sure while we recorded something else happened I'm oh no bet. doubt no doubt this is the time <laughs> this is when things always happen my friend I'm, I'm willing to bet it's usually right when i'm about to get food that's when things go down i'm starting to think it's a, a vendetta against me <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> it's usually when i leave to go get food that's when things go on so i think we covered everything up to this point at least we have the teams teams have folded or as they put it on hold because we don't say fold the AFL, they use the term unhold. Yeah, I hated that. I didn't even use on hold in the article. I just said <laughs> shut down. I, you know, I, honestly, for people watching, that was an Anthony call. To, 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 we just got to be call it what it is. I don't know what an on hold is. That's like when in a relationship where you say we're, we should take a break. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means you're you breaking know? up. You single. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Like, let's just call it what it is. They shut the team and shut. The, he said because it was on hold for the remainder of the season. So you're shut down, right? So I, I just called it that. But but yes, so that that's happened. And truly, it is unfortunate. I know we're laughing and making jokes about it. But truly, it's, it's unfortunate that this happened because everybody was excited. The players put their every, their you can tell they put their passion to play and and from talking with players on the team they they were really excited and they were hoping that this is going to be their their step forward so but yeah i didn't mean to cut you off there and going to uh, no you're uh, good man you do your but, thing but yeah <laughs> i so, think yeah, it's so sad as well about team shut down yep i do me personally I, I mean i just handle a lot of things by laughing it's a it's a it's a triggered emotion <laughs> that Works out sure. well. It's better than getting mad or upset, you know. So yeah, like yeah, like for sure, you gotta laugh every now and then. I'm right there with you, dude. The opportunity that it's taken from some of the players, the coaches, hell, I mean, even people that work in the office staff. There's there's so many that go into this, so it it definitely affects all of them. And I, my heart goes out to them if they're listening and and see this. I mean, this is us doing our due diligence to try to do whatever we can do to get the word out. You know, just with a show like this, so. Guys, yeah. girls, it's unfortunate. Yeah, and when I do my my interviews, you know, I let them I let them speak. I let them 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 say what they need to say. 
it, you know, I never try to intervene or just let them, because, you know, it's about them. And and it's, a lot of times they, they are afraid to, like, I've had people call me anonymously because they're afraid of retaliation against from the league. So you got that going on, too. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. It really is. Yeah, I appreciate the interviews and the way you do them because I'm very similar in that where I don't think my show is about me. It's about whoever's coming on. It's about whoever the, the topic is. It's about whatever they want to talk about is what we're doing. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know everything that's going on. So they, they're the ones that are sharing their stories. So you got to let them talk, sit back, and let them vent. By the way, full disclosure for everyone, I did not know James Shiver was going to talk that long. We had to stop and start the Zoom interview because I only have the free Zoom plan. So it, it, I I got that warning, that time warning about like three times. So <laughs> that, that ended up almost being an hour long. So I didn't. But James, he's a hilarious storyteller. Um, so, yep, there we go. That's Septus Finals right there. <laughs> uh, We're almost done, dude. The, the bus system. That's okay. You know, downtown drive, but people can't drive. I'll tell you, man, whenever, before they made the move with the voodoo, I had a, a friend in the, in the scope of things who reached out to Shiver for me. And I was going to, I was going to try to pursue the voodoo as a podcast and cover that team for the AFL. Uh, I'll tell you what, I never got that call from him. And now looking at it, I know that it wasn't him. He just knew that whatever product this is was not legitimate in my mind. I mean, that, yeah. That's and I'm looking at it. And Shiver's been around for a while, so he he's seen it all. So so um I'm I'm really I'm really grateful that he came on a show to to because I try to get everyone's perspective from players to coaches and owners. Everyone has a different perspective. So he really provided me a lot of insight. Still does because um, everything is is still kind of unclear. Um, so yeah, no, Shiver was was great to have on the show, um, to 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 discuss the the situation. Yeah, guys at home, I'll share the links uh, in the notes with everybody, and I'll put – I've had your information going at the bottom. If you want to find more from Anthony and Arena Insider, check out arenainsider.com or on Twitter X. Uh, he's at a Carter underscore TV. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which reminds me, I need to update that page because uh, that was – yeah, I'm a couple episodes behind on that page. But, yeah, Amen. if you go on to YouTube, we'll have all the episodes and the, the podcast. All the podcasts are up. So I, I appreciate you for doing this. And, you know, I'm I'm always willing to chime in whenever, you know, so to, to give people what's going on. Because so much happens at one time. And so I'm always interested in, in sharing what's going on and hear from me. So. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time, Anthony. It's been a good conversation. Nice and productive. We've talked about the subject at hand. Uh in terms of <clears throat> all this stuff, I mean, is there anything you want to say regarding the AFL and, and these developments before we kind of close everything out? Um, you know, I do, I do want to appreciate everyone that's been uh, reaching out and, and following me and supporting the channel. Um, it, from, a, from a journalist that's worked in the local markets to now going to independent, it really does mean a lot because, you know, the, the network guys always trump us uh, local guys and independent people. So I really do appreciate everyone for supporting that. Um, and just keep staying, staying tuned. And, and also understand that as fans, you know, if you're not in the media space, you still have a voice too. If you're everyone's technically a stakeholder in some way, if you buy a ticket, if you exactly. tune into their podcast, you're a stakeholder. So as stakeholders, you're entitled to share your opinion, your frustration, spreading the word and, and all of that. So, um, again, I do appreciate everyone for their support. And I appreciate you, Matthew, for your support as well. And all of the other blogs and other reporters that have chimed in, you know, and and that's what it's about. You know, it's the time for for uh, for, for journalists, you know, so um, I do appreciate that. Yes, sir. Hey, anytime you need a platform, come on back. If you need somebody to fill a spot to talk, come on back. I'm, I'm always available, man. Reach out. Hey, we need to. Um, I'm I'm expanding uh press pass a little bit. I want to incorporate more of these discussions. So, uh, you're always welcome to 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 chime in and and then we don't have to talk about arena. Everything that's going on and what you cover. So I'm, I'm open to that. Sound like a hubcap fell off. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought it was. <laughs>
dirt bike. This is dirt bike season. So oh, that's, that's got you. I don't think that's what it was, but it could have been it. Um, um, but yeah, also for the fans, if fans want to chime in as well and want to join in and share their discussion, I'm open to that as well. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you greatly. Or is there any projects or anything we should be looking for within the next week or two from you? Sure. Um, I think from, I'll speak on from X, X1 Media, we launched Glass Ceiling Sports. So we're going to start diving into WNBA uh, pretty soon. Um, so tune into that. But from arena to arena football perspective, I am actively working on a documentary, cool. basically breaking down all of this going on. Um, it's still in its early stages. I just interviewed about three people for that. Um, so over the time, I'll to make sure that channel gets updated, I'll release snippets from those interviews so people still can get a feeling for that. But yeah, we're going to do a full documentary. Um, and and I'm still making that push for Lee Hutton to, to do a sit down interview with Commissioner Hutton. Uh, so if you're seeing this, Commissioner Hutton, do want to sit down with you and talk this all out a good platform to do it. And so, yeah, just be tuned for the documentary. Um, subscribe to the podcast, YouTube. I'll be uploading clips later, doing more interviews. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, just stay tuned. And that's it. Man, I appreciate you spending your night with me. I, I know it, it looks like you need to get back into what you were doing, so don't want to keep you on too much longer. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, you know, it was Mother's Day, so it took me and my family went out to eat. Gotcha. And um, it was a steak dinner, so I feel the the eye is kicking in. So I'm probably gonna head home to sleep um, after sweat. I get these stories up. Yeah, after I get these stories up, and as long as nothing else happens, I gotta get some sleep for sure. Sounds good, Anthony. Man, I appreciate it again. I'll be sharing your stuff and looking for developments. Guys at home, follow and and share him and do what we can do to kind of get the good word out. And it'll be nice when all this is over and we can get to positive content for this league or whatever leagues we're discussing. I sure hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. Thank you, Anthony. Have a good night, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks. You as well, Matt. Have a good one. Have a good one. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Appreciate Anthony again, man. That was a good interview. And it that was the first interview I think I've had outside of, of – like a home environment. Now, he did a really good job to be outside and doing things. So appreciate that, Anthony. Check him out, arenainsider.com. And then you can find his X1 media and all that stuff on there as well. Uh, I, I noticed him on Twitter about three weeks ago, started following and then checking what he was saying and looking. And he, he's a good reporter. He's not one that's there for the clout. He's not one that's there for, I don't know, uh, to, to just get engagement. He's just wanting to spread news. And so that's kind of like me. Uh, I, I feel for that. So much respect to him. Anthony, keep doing what you're doing and we'll be watching guys at home. Appreciate you watching. If you watched, if there's anybody like this that you're interested in getting on and discussing things with, shoot me a message. Let me know. I'll try to facilitate it. XFL Mike G. What are you talking about? What's the hat? How about the hat I'm wearing? I'm not telling you that it's a secret. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we'll be back Tuesday with another episode of UFL Insiders. Come check that out. This is the first episode of AFN interview series I've done since the UFL's kicked up. It's been super busy. And so I don't know, it's it's like every day working towards UFL right now. Once things kind of clear out. At the end of the UFL season, you'll see a lot more of these shows and others, hopefully, in the future. Uh, in terms of the AFL stuff, if you're wanting to do more, like I said, follow him, check him out. There's other people that are also sharing some news and, and sharing tweets and such. But keep in mind, you need to be aware that speculation is a thing and that if someone's reporting something, if they don't have a source that's legitimate, then it may not be true. So always keep that in mind. And that's why us as AFN, we don't just jump headfirst into certain topics. I'm not going to do that without having the actual knowledge of that topic. And that's kind of why we got Anthony on today. Uh, no guests is scheduled for Tuesday for the UFL Insiders. I'm going to see what I can do, but I don't know if we'll get one. Either way, it'll be good. Uh if I do get one, I'll let you know soon. Promise. 
it was a really good day for UFL football. I know today's game, uh, the, the Battle Hawks versus the Stallions, that was probably one of the best spring games I've ever watched personally. It was it was a good one. So I'm glad that today was a day in UFL spring football history. <clears throat> Don't forget about tomorrow, guys. UFL's going again Sunday. Uh, we got the Michigan Panthers at the D.C. Defenders. That game starts at 11 a.m. Central. It's on ESPN. And then after that, you have the Brahmas at Roughnecks. That game starts at 2 p.m. Central. It's also on ESPN. <clears throat> uh, that's it for me. It's been a good time. And as always, appreciate you watching, listening, supporting. Like, share, and follow, please, if you haven't. Trying to get some of the YouTube numbers up. YouTube's just not a fun one for us for some reason. But either way, it's all good. Appreciate the support. Uh, appreciate UFL board, uh, as always. Great partners and look forward to the content they spit out because it's always something good. Also want to say shout out to all the guys at AFN, uh, the ones that are still, you know, being consistent and sending in articles and such, doing interviews, coming on the show. Thank you so much. And you know who you are. I don't have to say your name, but just know it is appreciated. And the more content we do, the better, as long as it's positive and not weird and gross. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's it for me. I'm out. Going to go relax. Uh, come back Tuesday, UFL Insiders. We will review week seven of the UFL. And yeah, so see you then. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, follow. Do it to it. Thanks. Go hard, go home, go hard, 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 go